Alright, what is up you beautiful people and welcome back to the high speed low drag bro. We are playing some Alarak today. We're joined by Sergeant Sprinkles on Manx. We got RTX on Hunter Horner. Ooh, oh baby. I'm gonna put down our Alarak here. So broad modifiers, everybody starts off with a Dahaka. We also all have a Giga Stim. Um so I'm just gonna get the scream and shout and everything. I'm just I'm, I'm just gonna blind into it, uh, and then so everybody has stim. And then we, the final modifier is um, double income on gas thanks to Bountiful here. Looks like we're up against Manx here, so we're just gonna chop chop on him. And uh, Alarax two attack range looks ridiculous here. Um, looks like he's hitting air. Uh, but yeah, Alarak on that stim, pretty good. I think against Manx, I think I wanna I wanna I wanna get a Slayer army. Uh, and then just go for Tall Stalkers. But I also have half a mind of going Tall Stalkers right away. But, you know, let's not do that, because going straight away into uh, Tall Stalkers is a bit of a meme against Manx at the very least, because he does have the capacity to, uh... He does have the... Oh, man, that's another man. Oh, man. Why does Inflict sound familiar? I feel like I've definitely, I've definitely played against Inflict before. Against and or with Inflict. Um, uh, anyways, we're gonna get that, 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 and I'm gonna get the Phasing Armor. But yeah, looks like we got a lot of Manx action here. Um, that'll be a little spicy. I uh, might need to get some vanguards actually. We'll have to see here. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, like the boys should be feeding Alarak at the time that you know, Alarak kills stuff. I just need that level two. Oh, that's an Aegis Guard, boys. That's an Aegis Guard. You gotta eat that high value target. Oh yeah, delicious. You gotta eat that Aegis Guard, boys. Um, yeah, we'll put that on two. Where is he? Where is he? Hotkey 2? Come on. Ah, he can't eat anything else. Aegis Guard cooldown's too long. Uh, I lost my Havoc though, but you know, these guys here should do a, a good job here. They'll like blink back. They'll... The Stim also gives you health regen, which is great. Um, which is great. It's awesome. Um, so it means their Stalkers can at least stay alive a little bit longer. Actually, I guess just say Slayers. Um, there we go. But yeah, they're just getting Zerg down here. You're gonna rush down here, but that's okay. Uh, all these light units are gonna get roasted. Roast them! Roast them! Kinda? Maybe? Yeah, we roasting. We kinda roasting. That's a lot of boys. Yep, that's the secret strategy here. Alright, I guess you can eat a boy here. Uh, you know, to just heal up and stuff. Come on, eat that Aegis Guard. Oh yeah. You know, he started popping his salvo. Nah. Just eat them, boys. Just eat them. Anyways, Aegis Guard is going to cause me some problems. It's going to give me some grief here because of the fact that he does so much damage to anything that's armored. And I don't really have a, a really good way to, like, stop him until I get, like, you know, more than one unit. Oh my god. Sometimes the units glitch out and they die on top of the Haka. You know. He's down tremendously, boys. He's down tremendously. Um, do I want a Vanguard? Vanguard could be helpful. Sure, I'll get a vanguard. I'll get a little vanguard here. Press X here to level up. Um, more healing, more screaming. I don't know, probably just more healing, more, 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 more munching. Uh, let's get that here. More splash. Cool. Get some more guys. Oh yeah, Alarax knockback wave is just gonna end him there. Um, there we go. Come on. Oh, that's a ghost. Oh jeez. Emperor Shadow. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough here. But anyways, damage amplification on the enemy Dahaka should make it easy for us to kill. Oh yeah, she's just oh she just got rushed down and she was stunned, so I don't think she can use her ability there, which uh, makes her like in, in, invulnerable. Um, her labyrinth cloak. Actually, these slayers are doing a pretty good job um, at uh, just focusing down these units here. I think I should probably get a few more slayers. So yeah, my my theory my theory of getting slayers first before going to Tall Boys. Uh, was correct. Although I think usually with Alarak, what you really want to do is get tall boys before you you start you know start heading off to, to to bigger to bigger regions. Also, I don't know why you would get a ghost because the scream actually shuts down the ghost pretty hard. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to micro Dahaka though. I do want to try and do that. The scream has that's a 40 second cooldown. Ugh, I don't know. I don't think I need to use it right now though. Uh, yeah, Alarak's just gonna take care of those guys. So I'm just gonna scream shut down the ghost. And then afterwards, eat the Aegis Guard. Eat the Aegis Guard. So yeah, if the Ghost can't use her abilities, then uh, she's not really a threat. Um, and then Alarax is going to go and stun him. 
There we go. She's stunned. She can't use her Labyrinth Cloak. And it's done. And it's done. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. The Vanguard gets eaten. Whatever, that's fine. The Vanguard's only there to add some additional splash. Uh, really nothing else besides that. Alright, now I think that we're, we're, we're in a stable position, so we're just gonna go for the Tall Boys. We're gonna go for the Tall Boys. The Tall Boys is the heavy firepower. Uh, every one second, 100 damage. We'll need a few Tall Boys before they start counting for something. But, uh, once they start getting there, it's gonna... It's gonna they're gonna start feeling it, Mr. Krabs. They're gonna start feeling it, Mr. Krabs. You know one thing? I've started, like, I've, been, I've started teaching French uh, using, like, Spongebob. In the way, in the sense that, like, I create, like, these little stories that are tailored to teach, like, some sort of, um, whatchamacallit. Some sort of, like, concept, you know, like, I don't know, the verb vouloir or something. And, uh, or, like, a verb tense. And then it's, like, a little Spongebob story that I just make up. Um, and I'm just like, I, I just noticed, like, I have so much appreciation for Spongebob, because, like, in a way, like, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, that's funny. And then, like, now that I'm looking at it, I'm just like, man, Spongebob had some pretty deep and meaningful lessons. Like, I, like, I, I also get, like, a, my, my students who are, who are English language learners to, uh, to watch it, uh, so they can listen and stuff. Uh, hey, we got, we got Gumba here. Um, and so, so yeah, like, they, they listen to it, and they watch it, and then, like, today I just watched a video called, like, The Best Day Ever, and Spongebob has the worst day ever. In the best day ever and then everyone is like well spongebob you gotta just you gotta think of it like this you know uh, there we go and so number here is like i gotta eat that thing uh yes sir i'm doing good there we go i'm gonna get that here boom i don't think i need aerial tracking there right now i don't oh, I, I couldn't eat that aegis guard though that's kind of bad uh, but I do need to... I think we can probably annihilate Aegis Guards if I have a few more of these guys here. Shock Divisions. Got the Decent going on here. Decent is always good. Let's put that in another one of these. But yeah, it's like... I don't know. I have so much fun. I, I think it's like it's like, um, it's like the things you don't see when you're a kid because you've simply never experienced it. And you just think, oh, that's funny. Oh, that's heartwarming. And then, like, you know, as an adult, you're like, damn. I know! Or something like that. You know, like, I, I relate to that. Uh, diff on, a, on, a, on a whole different level. So yeah, let's, let's just put all these guys down here. Actually, Gumba speaking to me reminds me of, uh, in the previous video, I was talking about special military operation. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll continue that, thing, that train of thought here in this video, because I was like, you know, I, I gotta continue it. If you guys haven't seen it, you have to go watch yesterday's video. Or if you guys are watching this in like, I don't know, two years in the future or something, uh, I don't know. Do people still care about special military operation in like two years from now? Uh, who knows? Um, I, I mean, probably if, you, if you're from that area, but, uh, yeah. So yeah, basically, uh, like, what I've watched has told me that, um, the Russian army is just gutted. It's like an empty shell of its former self. It has a lot of equipment, not really enough manpower, uh, and not really any ability to call upon that manpower in a, in a way that makes sense. Uh, well, not makes sense, but like, like in, the, in the same sort of Red Alert 2 style mobilization, um, that, you know, scared the crap out of, uh, the, the, the NATO powers in the Cold War. That and also, like, I don't know, Russia forgot that it's muddy. At, like, you know, it's mud season, boys. It's what literally stopped... <laughs> it's what really delayed the German attack in World War II. You know? And they sort of forgot about that part, you know? Um, but yeah, anyways, there's like, there's, there's like a whole slew of factors, too. Like, not just that, right? But, like, logistically... Russian Russian army was like, huh? What what are logistics? I've never heard of them. Um, I saw like so many pictures because like, I was browsing like the Reddit as well. Where it's just like they're like they literally just like I don't know, grabbed a bunch of equipment and like they're just grabbing whatever they can that carries people or moves or whatever and like strapping stuff to it. I'm like, man, this is supposed to be like a world superpower army. Man, it looks more like an insurgent force trying to like, you know, get the Americans out of their country or something. <laughs> like, I don't know, some of the some of the videos I saw were like that. I mean, you know, I'm not videos, like, like, like pictures. Like, there's just like random civilian trucks and cars. Like, there's a bunch of like, boys in a dump truck. Like, like you know, those big industrial ones that carry like a few tons of dirt. And I'm like, man, what happened? You know? Um, but yeah, anyways, that's about it. I don't know. 
opinions, whatever. I don't really have one on it besides the fact that war is heck. It sucks. You know, shouldn't really ever have wars. You know, I'm looking at those pictures and I'm like, man, like all those people were living lives and now some of them don't live those lives no more, you know, because they did or, you know, everything that they had was like just destroyed. But yeah. Anyways, I, I did get aerial tracking on my guys, so that Skyfree is going to do a number on me. Uh, and in response to the Skyfree, I'm going to need some War Prisms here. We got to we gotta really, like, you know, use them as a veil. These guys aren't going to last really long, though, because the Skyfree is thin. It's, it's nothing to joke about. Uh, I could probably get some Fusion Mortars for my... Oh, what the? Are those Galleons? That was a gigantic switch here. Oh my god, RKX the Madman coming in with those galleons. We might get overrun here, hold on. Um, one of these guys here so we don't get overrun. It looked a little spicy, but like if these galleons survive, which they look like they are going to, we are going to be in it to win it, boys. I'm going to overcharge this war prison here. I think it can still get eaten while it's overcharged, so that's a nice meme. Um... But damn, love that galleon swap. That galleon swap was beautiful. Um, ooh, now they just need some. Uh, they just need some. They just need some wasps on them, also known as interceptors, to sting the living daylights out of things. But yeah, I think one really interesting thing about Ukraine is that, um, but like in terms of military tactics that seem to be coming out, is drones might be the future of air power like right now our drones are like the drones are still kind of papega in terms of like what they're capable of right but like you don't need an airfield or a staging area to launch drones really they're tiny -er compared to like a conventional fighter jet so they're more resource efficient they can deploy more easily um you know you can like like it's usually like just usually what i've noticed in war is that whatever is like more affordable and effective to use tends to be the better weapon like overall you know um and like you know if it's more versatile if, it, if you can use it in more situations if it's harder to counter or like like there's lower limits to like if it's big and it looks impressive like the power the ring mothership um it probably is only great for uh videos uh <laughs> where you show it off because once you send that thing into battle, everybody's got all eyes on it, and it's going to get blasted to shreds. Um, I don't know, kind of like how like the main battle tank right now is like just like, I don't know. I don't want to be a tanker, boys. If it ever happens, like, get me out of that coffin. Like, the armor works until it doesn't. Then you're dead. <laughs> like, basically, probably instantly. Um, but yeah. Because I feel, I feel like with 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 before, like the strategy, like if you want to gain anti supremacy, you just take out the airfields, which means there's no more ability for planes to take off. But now the interesting thing is, I think you could probably still like have drones take off, like in some like, you know, as long as like, it's, like there's a little bit of space that's clear, you could get some drones in there. I mean, right now I don't know, I don't think drones are you know, on par with fighter jets in terms of how powerful and strong they are, and like you know, they probably might be have some tactical weaknesses in terms of like getting jammed or disrupted and other things, but those are problems that you could probably solve, you know? Get some get get your boy Raytheon tech on it or something like that. They're probably on it already, you know? Who knows? Um But yeah, it's like I don't know. I don't know. It just it just seems interesting, you know? Um, to consider what um, could come. But also it's best that <laughs> it's best that it's best that we have no more war, honestly. Oh man. Um, there, ain't, there ain't nothing quite like war. In the sense that it's straight up just hell boys. There's nothing glorious about it. Like, I don't know. Like all the like all the images I've seen, it's just it's, just, it's terrifying. That and like it's like super tragic too. Oh my god. All my slayers are just got roasted. It got roasted. Whew. Like I don't know. I think it's really easy to hate on like Russia, but like you gotta think about it from like the like all perspectives too. And in a way, like you got like these like young Russian boys who are like serving their conscription duty because I think like Russia has a roster like that. Like you're just like you just it's just part of like the thing, you know? It's like a rite of passage. You just become a conscript for um, 
It's like the rotation. You randomly get chosen or something. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it is, but I know that there's a constant rotation and stuff like that. Like, what is it? These guys are like 18 to like 20. Man, like the past like two years, like they're like basically 16 year olds or like 18 year olds because like COVID, they probably have to stay inside and whatnot, right? And then they're like, you know, like, I'm about to start my university life or, or whatever after high school, whatever comes after that, you know? And then, and then like, you know, they're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm being conscripted, you know, it's just like the special, like same old roster, nothing happens, you know? And then BAM! Special military operations, suddenly you're driving to a country you've never really been before, been to before, and then BAM! Your, uh, your BMP gets hit, the whole thing like catches fire, you get roasted alive along with everybody else in there. And that's it, you know, that's it, boys. And I'm uh, thinking about that, I'm just like, fuck. Yeah, you know, I know, I know we're playing strategy games here where people are literally dying. You know, this black hammer, there's a dude in there, boom, he's dead. But yeah, like, you know, keep the war in the games, boys. War in the games is fine. No one's getting hurt. Oh man. Anyways, enough about that. <sighs> Looks like the Wrathwalker stack. And the tank, we just out, we just stack super hard on that. Gee, what the? I did not expect to do that much damage. Inflict, you're actually doing so much, inflicting quite a lot of damage here. This makes your, I oh, he built way too many ultras. I think against this composition, you just want to get a bunch of sky fairies. I think you just want to drown in sky fairies. Um, and then boys, I think, or or actually warhounds probably would have been done it. But yeah, inflict here with a lot of Aegis cards. Alright, well, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. And until next time, I will see you guys later. The tires, let's light some fires! Need a light. They picked the wrong fight.